What's happening, everybody? Jeff Lightsy Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel. Thank you guys for the continued support. Man, this is this is crazy. So the college football committee came out and they voted for the best teams to get in the playoffs. Of uh, it was Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Ohio State. Those are the three, four best teams in the country. Those are the teams I feel like rightfully deserve to be in the playoffs. The, the playoffs got this right, but college football's been trash all year, guys. Like I don't know what made you think that this was going to change with the last rankings, like the last standings. I mean, I'm looking at teams like South Carolina, whose coach got fired in the middle of the season. They're going to a bowl game, right? My school, uh, Western Kentucky University, uh, they're going to a bowl game. They have a losing record. Uh, teams like Kentucky in the same state here, four and seven, going to a bowl game. Army, nine and two, not going to a bowl game. And so what in the hell made you all think that the college football committee wouldn't get this wrong, in your opinion, when I actually think they got it right? So I'm trying to pull up. I'm going to pull up the um, college football standings of the for the playoff. And so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what's all going down. Because Ohio State got in, and they are college football standing, blah, blah, blah. Where are we going? Where are we going? So college football final rankings, all right? And so we'll, let, me, let me see if I can get this to pull up. Because, like I said, it's been – I mean, it's been what it's been the entirety of the season. We we're not going to act like this season has been picture perfect. We're not going to act like this season has been ideal. This season has been trash. I mean, it's been trash all year. COVID killed the season from the jump. You know, you had you had conferences cancel their season and then come back. And then Pac-12 cancel their season and then come back. And then teams like the uh, – conferences like the ACC and the SEC it was like, we ain't folding. We, we're going to play no matter what. And so because of that, it just made everything difficult. Everything was difficult. It was hard to evaluate teams. You had some teams like Alabama play 11 games, go 11 and 0. Uh, Clemson go 10 and 1. Uh, Notre Dame go 10 and 1. But then you had some teams like Ohio State play six games, go 6 and 0 and get in there. And the reason why Ohio State, let's be honest, guys, we know why Ohio State's in the playoff. It's because of their tradition. It's because of the recruiting. It's because of their history. It's because they have a quarterback that's going to be top three in the NFL draft. Like all of that goes into account. And the fact that they're undefeated in only six games, even though they barely beat a Northwestern. But all of that plays a factor. In the fact that Ohio State, normally in these playoff games, they show up. They had one, one year where they kind of got uh, blown out the water, I think, by Clemson one of the playoffs games but they but they've won a national championship last year they gave us the best playoff game right the 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 game that was better than the national championship game that was lsu ran through everybody but ohio state clemson in last year's playoff game ohio state actually should have won right it was because the receiver ran the wrong route chris olave ran the wrong route and fields threw a pick to end the game that was the best playoff game last season so all of that plays into account on why they're in the playoff. Don't give me the Cincinnati. Hell no, nobody want to see Cincinnati in the playoffs. We do, you really think we want to see Cincinnati go into the playoff and get beat by 50 by Alabama? Like, do we really want to see that? Do we want to see Cincinnati get in the playoff and get beat by 35 by Clemson? Because Clemson don't normally beat teams like by 50. Alabama does that. No, I don't want to see that. Now, Texas A&M had an appealing case, right? Like, Texas A&M, I will say probably had the best case. They're the team ranked at number five. I'm going to share my screen and, and show the final rankings. Texas A&M, they, they made a compelling argument. Their only loss of the season was to Alabama. So here's the college on the left. You'll see the college football playoff rankings. Alabama one, Clemson two, Ohio State three, Notre Dame four, Texas A&M five, and then Oklahoma, Florida, Cincinnati. Now, Cincinnati probably should have been over Florida. <laughs> <laughs> like, they kind of screwed them on that. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, it didn't matter. All these teams went to BCS games or New Year's Six games and stuff. So it wouldn't matter because Cincinnati ain't no way in hell they was getting in. So here's the thing. College football has been trash all year. Like, like that, that is what it is. And COVID is a big reason why. But if you had to pick the, three, the four teams before the season that would be in the playoff, what would people have? They would have had Ohio State. They would have had Alabama. They would have had Clemson. Those three automatically. And guess what? Those three are in. What's going to end up happening, guys? What's going to end up happening? They're going to expand this thing to eight, right? They're, they are going to expand the playoff to eight teams. They're going to do it. So let's let's just look. Let's, let's run this back one more time and see what the playoff would look like if they expanded it to eight teams this year. Uh, if they expanded, it the, expanded the playoffs to eight teams this year, it would be Ohio, Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Notre Dame, 
A&M would have got in, Oklahoma would have got in, Florida would have got in, Cincinnati would have got in. Like, those would have been the eight teams. In that, I mean, guys, let's be real. Who's winning out of that? These same four teams besides Notre Dame. I think A&M is probably better than Notre Dame. Let's be honest. They probably are. Notre Dame just got the floor wiped through them by Clemson. I think A&M, even though I don't like Kellen Mond, I don't think he's that great of a quarterback, I think a and is a better team than Notre Dame. I think Oklahoma playing the way they're playing right now is probably a better team than Notre Dame. To me, Notre Dame, you should have the biggest gripe about more than Ohio State. Well, Ohio State is the simple fact that they didn't play enough games. But that isn't their fault Michigan drops out because of COVID. That isn't their fault Maryland drops out because of COVID. Like, that isn't their fault. Their conference decided not to start the season when everybody else started the season. Like, that is not their fault. Them in the Pac-12, the fact that they started the season four or five weeks after everybody else, is not Ohio State's fault. Like, like we can't, we can't blame them for that. We cannot blame them for that. Now, their showings in these games, we can put their – Put them on the screen and say, hey, they haven't they haven't showed up like we thought they would, especially against Northwestern. I thought it'd be a blowout. They did not blow Northwestern out. So you can hold that against them, but you can't hold against them the fact that their conference started late or the fact that two or three of their games got canceled because of COVID. They can't, can't knock them for that. What I will say, when this playoff does get to eight, eight teams, the cream always rises. It's going to be the same teams we're talking about. The cream always rises. Bama, Clemson, Ohio State are still going to be the best teams. That's not how you fix a broken system. The system is broken. You're not going to act like it isn't. But you don't fix a broken system by throwing more teams in there. Will we get an occasional upset? Absolutely. Absolutely, I think we'll get an occasional upset. How often will it happen? Not very often. Not very often. We see upsets in bowl games, right? And, and part of the reason why we see upsets in bowl games, like so when, when teams like Cincinnati or teams like – um. Like what are some of the teams that pull like Boise State in years past or or UCF in years past or some of these other teams that pull off these upsets? Part of the reason why they pull off these upsets is not because they're the better team because they won on that night, but more than likely they're not the better team. They're the better team that night. Why we see those upsets is because a lot of those teams, the teams that are in those bowl games, wish they were in the playoff. <laughs> they wish they were with the big dogs, but instead they got to play you into no, no excuses here. No excuses here. But that team who comes out to play, the UCF, the Boise State, the whoever, they come to play because this is their national championship. Hell, UCF hung a damn banner that said national champions when we all know they weren't the national champions, right? They come to play because this is their national championship, whereas those other programs like Auburn, who's lost in the past, Alabama, who's lost in the past in uh, BCS or New Year's Six games, uh, you know, Oklahoma, who's lost in the past in some of these New Year's Six games. It's not their national championship. You know what's their national championship? The real national championship is their national championship. Like, that's that's what happens, right? So I'm not knocking those other schools, the smaller schools, the schools that pull off the upsets, but let's let's be honest about it. But in a playoff-style game, which there will, once again, the playoff is going to expand to eight teams. So in a playoff-style games, those upsets are less likely to happen because guess what's still on the table? A real national championship. That's still on the table, a real national championship. So it's going to be interesting. When that, I don't know if they'll vote on it this summer, but by next summer, the playoff will be expanded to eight teams. I, I, can guarantee, I can almost guarantee it. I think so. And we'll see, guess what? The cream will still rise. That's not how you fix – adding more teams is not how you fix the broken system. You fix the broken system, I think, by cutting down the scholarship amount. Instead of 70 scholarships, give them 55 and let some of the, the instead of five, uh, all of, uh, three or four uh, five-star running backs going to Alabama, they only get one a year, right? Or two a year. You know what I'm saying? One instead of three or four, you know, four, three or four or five in, the, in one running back room, four four-stars or four or five-stars going to Alabama or Clemson, you only get one, right? You only get two in that room. And the other three stars or whatever, you got to pick and choose, right? So you cut down some of the scholarships and disperse some of the players at some of the different uh, schools around the country. That's my idea. They used to have 85, uh, used to cut it, had 85 scholarships to cut it down to 70. I think if you cut it down 10 more, you help a lot of different schools around the country. That's just my two cents. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Once again, I'm Jeff Lighty Jr. with the Black Boss Channel, the Boss Sports Network. Thank you guys for listening. Hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.